Okay, so in this video, let's talk about selection range objects and how we can navigate through it. So I'm going to go ahead and as usual, open Visual Basic Editor, create a module and create a subroutine. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and talk about selection. So the first thing we need to know is understand the difference between selection and active cell. So when you work with a single cell, so for example, if I click on this cell right here, if I do something like active cell dot value, let's get rid of this and I'm going to make it equal to 55. If I run this code, it's going to make that cell C 55. Now, if I change that active cell to selection, let's change that 55 to something else. I'm going to run this and you can see we changed that cell to 77. So when you work with a single cell, you can treat selection and active cell as pretty much the same thing. However, if I select a range like this, actually, let's do it over here. Now, in this case, if I do active cell and I run this, you'll see the active cell, which is the one in the corner, is 77. However, if I use selection instead of active cell, that will be this entire range. So when you work with a range, selection is the whole range. And pretty much anything you could do with a range, you could do with selection. With exception of that selection is the selection of your application. So if I do application dot, see selection is a part of that application. It's not a part of the workbook or the worksheet. It's the part of the application while the range we can get to a range by getting to the active sheet and get to the range in that active sheet. So there are going to be some differences. With that said, you can use selection to work with user's input. So if your user selects something and you want your macro to work with that selection, you can refer to that selection with the selection and make changes to it. So most of what you could do with a range, so if I do range A1 through B7, I do dot, it's going to give me methods and properties. Most of these should be available for selection too. So for example, there it is, let's do clear contents. So that's something that's available for a range which means we should be able to do that for selection as well. So if I just do this, now I'm going to just select this, go back and run this, clears the selection. Let's get back to the range for a second. So I'm going to just activate this. I'll just try to refer to a range we'll do from H1 through K six. So with ranges, if you already have a range, you can refer to inner parts of that range. So if we think about this range from H1 through K six, that's pretty much this. Now, if I wanted to find a cell within that range, I can do that by opening another parentheses and see what happens. I get a row and column number. So if I do something like two comma one, that would refer to the second row and the first column in that selected range. In this case, it has nothing to do with our selection. It's just the range that we selected here in our code. So even though I could just click here outside of that range, this would still refer to from that age one we would go to to get to the second row 
and the first column that would be pretty much h2 at that point. So if I do something like this value, it should write to h2 cell. I'm just gonna select this to make this more apparent. So now if I do something like four, four, that would be fourth row, fourth column. So that's gonna be K4. There it is. So we can read those values like that. We can also write those values as you can see. So if my selection was from H3 through K6, which is, again, to illustrate this, I'm gonna select it here. Now if I do four, four, it's gonna be fourth in this range and then four here, so K6. So if I run this, see it's gonna write to K6. So all of this is also possible within our selection. So if we do something like selection and then do the same thing, see the parentheses right after that, similar to this range, and do something like 4, 4, 55. Again, if I go and select something here, now we're working with our selection. If I run this code, see we get 4 down and 4 to the right. You could also modify or get columns within your selection. So, for example, if I do selection columns, and I have to spell it right, and then give it a column number, let's say two. So I'll do again dot value. If I run this, see I grab the second column in my selection and I wrote 55 to it. And the same way you could read those values if this is on the right side of that equal sign. So if I do column four, that's gonna be the fourth column. Similar to this, we can also do rows. So if we wanted to read a row from that selection, so rows, let's do two. So that would be the second row. Let's try to run this code. See, the second row in my selection is now 88. You should be able to do this with a range as well. So if I comment this and go to this range, I can do rows 2, 77. And if I run this, see, it's H3 to K6. So that was this to illustrate it, and the second row now is 77. Similarly, we can do columns to get the second column, or you could do the first column. So we can navigate within these ranges, and selection gives us a range, range gives us a range. So working with user's selection, selection will help you do that. All right, let's clean this up. This looks good. Let's start over again and talk about a couple of other interesting things about this. Another interesting thing about this, see, I go from H3 now through K6. Again, I'll just select it so we can have some visual in the background. Actually, I'll just give it some background color for now. So I don't have to have it selected. Just to make sure we don't confuse it with selection. What's interesting about this is that we can also keep going. So if I do column zero, that would be the one to the left of the first column. If I go negative one, it's gonna go two columns right, which would be this column. We could also keep going to the right the same way. So if I do something like five, there's no fifth column in that range, but we can navigate to that column and write to that area. We should be able to do this with rows as well. So if I do rows zero, again, the first one is this. If I do row zero, that gets me right above the data. And we should be able to do this with our selection as well. So let's try that. So I'll do columns zero dot value. I'll try five. So right now my selection is a single cell and you can see how we went to the left of that and we wrote five.
But if I select a whole range like this, go back and run this, see that's the column to the left. All right, so let's try to do something here. So I'm gonna just clear all of this first. And I'm gonna just have these numbers selected. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to go and put a formula right next to this selection. So I'm gonna do selection and I'm gonna open this. So I want to stay in the same row as my selection. And I want to go one to the right, so the second column. And I'm gonna make the value, or I can do formula. Maybe I should do formula. And as a matter of fact, I'll do R1C1 formula because that will make this easy. The formula should be equal to RC negative one because the formula is gonna go to this now G2 cell. And in G2 cell, we want to stay in the same row, but go to the column to the left. This should be actually negative one. And that will just divide by two. So it's not gonna be a very meaningful formula, but it's gonna be whatever formula you would want. Now that should put the formula in the cell. Now then I would like to try to drag that formula down to match the selected range. So again, I'll do selection and then columns two to get the second column, which is gonna be this thing on the right. So that's where I need this to go. But the cell is gonna be still that selection one, two. And that should have auto fill method for the same reason that ranges have an auto fill method. So this will just select that cell again that should have the formula at that point. And then I'm gonna try to drag that formula down in that second column of that selection. So let's try to run this. And if you look here, we have our formula right next to that selected column. And it's basically dividing it by two. Now, if I select this, see I'm not selecting the whole column, just this much from this G column. Go back and run the same code. Now we went to the next column and we drag it down as far as our selection and we did that same thing. And again, I could also just select this and run that code. And you should be able to see it works the same way. You could accomplish the same thing by, let me write that. I'm gonna copy and paste this too. I'll comment the first two lines and show you the alternative. I'm gonna delete all of this stuff and select this again. So instead of doing this, I can do dot offset because range has an offset method. Selection should have it too. And offset is how many rows up or down we want to go. So I'm gonna stay in the same row, zero. And I wanna go one column right, so I'm gonna do one to go to this G column. So if I do selection right now, it's gonna be taking this entire range and offsetting it one right, and it will just put the formula in here. I'm gonna run this. So I can just offset and put the formula, and because it's a formula, it automatically dragged it down. So now I'm curious if we could simply just use this to accomplish the same thing. I had the wrong thing selected. And that works too. And the same way if I select this, there it is. We could also try to replicate our first piece of code by combining selection with an active cell. So here we used to pick up 
the first cell to the right of our selection, which we can do by doing, well, taking the active cell, which is the white cell there, and then doing offset, zero rows, one column, and just put the formula in there. That's just gonna put the formula here in the first row. And then I can take that same active cell with an offset and then drag it down to our selection and use offset instead of using column. Let's type this right. So this should accomplish the same thing. As you can see, there's usually 40 ways to do the same thing when you write code. But mainly, I'm just trying to explain you how we can navigate through these things and just understanding what selection is and how we can work with it. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.